Rust and Mods fans, we are in Del Mar, California at Good Guys Rod and Custom. It is the Del Mar Nationals here in California, and what better place to shoot some features of some incredible restored and modified classics than the greatest car show in the world. Let's go check them out and see what's out there. Rastamaz Nation, I am here with perhaps one of the most beautiful Dodge Chargers in history. This is a 1968 Dodge Charger and it has got something special under the hood. An SRT10 V10 engine out of a Dodge Viper. I'm going to bring the builder in here, Ray. He built this car and it is incredible. Ray, tell me a little bit about this car and kind of, you know, the build process, where you started from, kind of the the whole story in a short and condensed version. Yeah, my, um, I, I bought the car out of Texas and um, the car had a lot of rust in it, but it drove. It pulled hard to one side when you brake. But so I was a little disappointed with the car and let it sat for a while. But I took my son for a drive one day and his friends and my son asked me, well, what engine are you going to put in it, a Hemi or something like that? And I said, well, maybe something, you know, a cheap Hemi 440 something I can afford and yeah. it was my son who said hey let's put a Viper in it so that kind of set the ball rolling two weeks later we had the motor and the transmission sitting in the garage and it was just a mission from then on Wow so tell me about this V10 uh, what like year Viper did you source it, it from? It comes out of a 2002 Dodge Viper so it's a gen late gen 2 okay which are the bulletproof engines it has a six-speed Tremec engine in it, so the motor's turning um, 527 horsepower at the flywheel. Wow. And probably um, closer to 450 at the back tires. Wow, that is amazing. This car also has an incredible interior. Uh, let's take a look. Ray, take me through the interior on this car and, and why it's also special. So the seats in the car are both electric. They come out of an 06 GTO. It's the only non-Mopar part in the car. Okay. Um, the dash is actually kind of special because my brother works at a space company. Wow. And the carbon fiber comes off the scrap pieces um, out of his company. The rest of that carbon fiber is on the planet Mars right now. That is something else. Yeah, the, wow. the gauges are all autometer gauges. Okay. Um, and tried to keep the car looking as stock as possible and keeping the purity of the car while doing the resto mod. The, the back seat's original to the car, as are the, the side panels, the door cards and all of that. So yeah. the mission was not to change the purity of the car, you know, while making the car modern and fun to drive. Absolutely, yeah. So speaking of fun to drive, how about the suspension? What are we kind of working with there? The suspension is a Bill Riley front suspension, so fully independent, coil over, um, great big sway bar. The rear suspension is, suspension is firm feel. The car sits at the right height for me and also performs really good. Excellent. It's flat at speed and flat around corners. I feel like that's something you need with a car this size. Yeah, so it's a big car, yeah. but it, it handles flat on, on any of the corners you're going around, which is what you want in a car like this. Absolutely, yeah. For stopping this car, what kind of brakes? All Willwood, so the 12 inch rotors in the back and the 13 and a half inch six piston rotors in the front. Originally, I built the car with um, just manual brakes with the bigger rotors and it stopped good, but um, I decided after a while it needed something better. I ended up putting um, Hydro Boost in it. Okay. So a CPP Hydro Boost system in it. Very nice. And it'll stop on a dime now. It drives hard and it handles good. and It's yeah. a zero to 60 and four second car. That is amazing. 
Um, how about the paint? The paint is very, uh, it, it stood out immediately. When we were walking over here, I immediately saw this car pulling in and I saw it sparkling. I just couldn't resist running over here. So the, the paint, um, my wife and I were on a Sunday drive and I was still trying to figure out what to paint, what color to paint it. And a 2011 Dodge Challenger pulled up next to us in the green with envy. Oh yeah. And I looked over and saw it and I said, that's the color and we added the diamond dust inside the paint to just give it, make it pop as you walk around the car. It's all PPG paint. It's um, four of the base coats, which has a gold and silver pearl, and then seven clear coats on top of it. Wow. Um, should we move to the back? I decided on the fuel cell, and I needed a higher pressure um, fuel pump for the motor. Yeah. So I went with the Aeromotive equipment, um, tank and fuel pump and then went with the dual batteries because the the fuel pumps and the um, fuel injection systems are basically 30 amp systems oh, yeah so you need, a lot, you need a lot of energy as well as the stereo I'm really really um, a fan of resto mods because I, I really love the old sheet metal with the modern technology inside it because it makes it a fun and reliable driver. Absolutely, yeah. You know, the Mopars, you don't see a lot of them on the road. Building this car, I was paying twice as much for parts as the Chevy and Ford guys. Yeah. They're a lot more popular now, but at the time the car was built, you know, I was paying twice as much for, for sheet metal as the other guys. But yeah. you can see for yourself how, how popular it is at a car oh, show. It's an icon. I guarantee there are more pictures taken of this car than any other car. Yeah. Everybody loves a Charger because everybody's dad had one. Yeah, my dad had one. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ray. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for showing me this car. It's, All right, guys. Thank you so much. No problem. All right, guys, I'm here with another incredible resto mod. This is a 1967 Chevelle, and this is Keith's car. Uh, Keith, tell us a little bit about your Chevelle and what's special about it. Well, I've been looking for a Chevelle for uh, some time and uh, hadn't been able to find one. I was in LA at a concert and I just happened to look on Craigslist. I saw this car and uh, went and saw it and I loved it, I fell in love with it. It's a bit unusual because it's uh, a 67 300, so the 300 series was the low end Chevelle. So there's not many of them that you really see as a post car. So it's got the, the center post between the front window and the rear window okay. um, and it doesn't have like the sail fins which actually at the time I was really looking for but the uh, it was a, a frame of restoration that had been done like years ago um, so I bought it and uh, started to do my my thing with it so uh, you know replaced all the uh, the cooling system new radiator uh, put a new transmission in new rear end disc brakes all around wheel woods all around and I've just finished uh, rewiring it from front to back, so I stripped all the wiring out. Um, put in a new, like, custom center console with the uh, gauges. And uh, new wheels, new tires, and that's about it, really. All right. Uh, tell me a little bit about the engine, kind of where you sourced it from, and, you know, is it like a crate, or uh, where'd you get it? This, uh, it's a 350 small block Chevy with a performance cam, uh, cam black pistons. Um, I just really I didn't really do much to the engine, put new like rocket covers on, um, air filter and things. Um, so most most of it was as I built it as as I bought it for the engine. Cool. But, uh, okay. Um, how about the interior? Have you done any um, work to the interior or any uh, changes just, there? Just the major changes putting in the uh, um, like a center console. So I built the like the center console for all the gauges. Okay. Um, everything else is pretty much as it is. It's still the seats are still standard. When I did all the wiring, I had all the seats out and everything. So yeah. the old belts were starting to fall to bits. Yeah. I don't, probably don't really need anything quite as heavy duty as these, but uh, yeah. that's what I ended up with. But I like, like the look of them, really. Amazing, yeah. yeah. This is an excellent car. How, how long have you had it now? Um, probably about five years. Five years, yeah. okay. And uh, it's got like an infinity uh, stereo system in the in the nice. back. So nice. Yeah. You get out and drive it a lot, or 
Yeah, I try to. Yeah, I yeah. try to. I like to be. I think it's a shame when you see so many beautiful cars that aren't driven. Yeah. And I, I, I like to drive it, so it's, it's fun to drive. Well, that's great. Yeah, it ain't no garage queen. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm here with Sean. He is the owner of this one of a kind Pontiac Grand Am. Sean, tell us a little bit about your car and your history with it. Uh, it's a 1973 Pontiac Grand Am. It was an original 455 car. I bought it in 1989. I restored it in 2000 and then re-restored it in 2015. I took the 455 out. I put in an LS7 uh, and a six-speed in it. Uh, makes about 600 horsepower. <clears throat> really, really easy car to drive. Very comfortable, but uh, viciously fast if you want it to be. <laughs> I bet. I bet you've put that to the test a few times. Yes, yeah. <laughs> a lot of modern suspension and brakes, uh, okay. 19 inch tires and wheels, just, you know, not, not too far over, t over the top. So you told us that this was a labor of love. You said you built this in your own garage. What was that yes. like? I, uh, I took the body off the frame. I completely deconstructed the car. It took me about four and a half years to restore it. I just took my time. I knew what I wanted. I didn't want somebody else to build the car and I didn't have the money to do that, so I did it myself. Awesome, man, that's incredible. So uh, the LS7, is it like a crate? Where'd you uh, find that from? No, actually I bought the block, a bare block. <clears throat> I had the uh, short block built by a company and then I assembled the rest of it with the cylinder heads. I had the, the heads ported, they're Brodex heads. And then bought all the, uh, the accessory drive is a GM accessory drive. The mounts are from uh, BRP hot rods, so the uh, LS fits in the chassis. And then the entire chassis was fabricated by Cambra Motorsports in Orange, California. They uh, re-welded the entire frame. They, uh, they put supports in it. They uh, completely closed the channel. Uh, everything's powder coated. Um, I built the rolling chassis in my garage and then put the body back on it. And then Cambra Motorsports, uh, they also painted the car and they did a fantastic job. It is an incredible car. It really looks great. I've never seen anything like it. Um, you were also talking about how when you drive this car, it corners really, really well, and it drives as good as a modern car, if not better. It, it drives almost as nice as a modern car. I have coilovers at all four corners. I can put it wherever I want it. I can set the ride to, I can set it to kill if I want, or I can make it really soft. So. Nice. It's pretty much on the softer, sporty side, and that's kind of the way I like it. It's comfortable to drive. That's good, yeah. yeah. So, speaking about driving, let's look at the interior real quick. You know, I didn't want it to look too modern, so I, I tried to keep it, you know, somewhat subtle. Yeah, even the dash and, like, uh, the gauges, it, a lot of it looks original. I see you even got the tape deck over there. Yeah. That's yeah. great. The dash is all original, except the gauges were redone by Redline gauges. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so they work with the modern LS motor. So I did notice this right here on the hood. Yeah. Uh, I don't see that often. Tell, yeah. tell me what, what so that is. So Pontiac, a lot of Pontiacs had hood tachometers. Uh, GTOs had them, some Firebirds had them. And I always loved the way that that looked. So I figured I wanted to cook the car to have a hood tack. So I went ahead and did the hood tack. I actually built this as a Hearst tribute car because these were never Hearst cars. But I like Hearst. I like the idea of what they did back in the 60s. So I, I had the seats embroidered, I had the carpets embroidered, and then I actually, I had um, billet badges here in San Diego. I had them build those badges for me. I gave them the originals, and then I gave them a Hearst badge, and I said, I want both of these together, and we designed it together, and then um, I put those on the car because I just kind of wanted it to look like it came from the factory like that. Excellent. And then how about the uh, the brakes and then kind of the weir wheel tire combo here? So the brakes are wheel woods, um, six pistons in the front, fours in the back. The wheels are actually from a company called Modulare, and they're in Orange, California. Uh, they're 19s, they're 19 nine and a halfs in the front, uh, 19 11s in the back, and I've got uh, Nitto tires, 275s up front and uh, 305s in the back, and they're both 19 inch. I feel like you, your vision for the car w was executed and uh, you, you actually, uh, off camera, you said that uh, something about if you ever do sell it, what, what, what was that Oh, that you I said? said, I don't know who the, uh, the next owner of the car will be, but it'll be after I'm dead. Because <laughs> I'll never sell this car. <laughs> yeah. If you guys want more restored and modified content, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're posting every week. So if you want to see cars like this one, 
make sure you check us out and happy cruising.